Boom, we are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is, of course, your boy, Nolan Hawkeye Anthony here. And I thank you all for being here, wherever you may be. And, of course, however you may be listening. This is going to be a more re relaxed podcast or episode. Uh, I'm going to be reading an article from the LA Times basically explaining what the what USC and UCLA joining the Big Ten means for the Big Ten, what it just means overall, what it means for Iowa, so on and so forth. Now, I've said, uh, and many of you are aware of this, I posted it on Facebook. Um, my personal take on this is probably a little bit different than most given where I live and how this impacts me individually, but I will do my best to separate the individual from the overall projection of all of this. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys to consider hitting that subscribe button. We are 40 subscribers away from hitting the vaunted thousand subs. I am so grateful, so ecstatic. Uh, we are so freaking close. I cannot wait. Uh, and I wouldn't be here without you guys. But at the very least, I hope you guys consider hitting that like button, commenting. Let me know what you think of UCLA and USC joining the Big Ten. It, will it stop here? Where will the Big Ten, where will the conferences go after this? This is a massive topic. It really, really is. What does this mean for a program like Iowa State? Things like that. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And without further ado, let's get in to this. So here's the article from the LA Times. Usually, you know, I wouldn't care too much about any article the LA Times writes. Um, but, you know, with with th this, do this article does break down what it means for all the other sports because... The UCLA and UC, USC are not just really respected uh, schools when it comes to football and basketball, but because of the weather that occurs out here in California, it provides an avenue to play certain sports that just isn't really there in the Midwest or the East Coast outside of maybe having a a killer indoor facilities at your school, which is possible, but it is very difficult to do. Um, you know, for example, I, the University of Iowa's indoor pool is amazing. It's 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 beautiful. It's gorgeous, but it costs a lot of money to maintain. Whereas on the West Coast. They don't have to make those uh, those facilities indoor. They can make the facilities outdoor. You know, go off of uh, they can go off of you know the natural heat and things like that. But the point is, is that USC and UCLA have a ton of sports that would qualify as Olympic sports: softball, water polo, your boys' uh, collegiate sport. Uh, USC and UCLA, when it comes to water polo, are top-notch programs. Uh, they are, year in, year out, one of the schools that makes it to the Final Four. They, uh, USC or USC, or excuse me, USC or UCLA won the national championship uh, both, both years, or all three years, excuse me, while I was playing water polo at UOP. They are phenomenal at these Olympic sports. And the Big Ten doesn't really have these sports. I mean, they have softball, but they certainly don't have water polo. So that's a whole different thing to get into, which I will read to you here on what is going to happen. The Big Ten Conference needs a bigger trophy case. UCLA and USC will bring 227 NCAA team championships to the Big Ten in 2024 after shocking the college sports world with a dramatic divorce from the Pac-12 on Thursday. Through huge paydays from football and men's basketball media deals, 
or though huge paydays from football and men's basketball media deals were driving, were a driving force behind the shift, UCLA and USC successful Olympic sports must also adjust to new competition, which is what I was just discussing rivalries and traditions. USC and UCLA's men's volleyball and water polo programs will continue in the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation, and the beach volleyball teams will remain in the Pac-12 because the Big Ten doesn't sponsor those sports. And, you know, just in case you're not aware, in some of these other sports, you know, you could have a school like, let's just, for, for Iowa fans out there, let's just say Wartburg. You could have a school like Wartburg that in basketball and football would be considered a division three or division two school, but in softball or whatever could be considered division one because, well, just because, uh, just because not as many schools around the country have a softball program or have a water polo program. So in other words, smaller schools can be considered a division one type team when it comes to these smaller sports uh, that are played. So that's what's going to happen with the Olympic sports in case you were wondering like softball, things like that. Now, what does this mean for the major sports? Well, as far as I'm aware, uh, USC and UCLA don't have wrestling programs, which is too bad because I think they would actually be decent if they decided to take up those two sports. Um, but I think they would have virtually zero fan attention to any of those sports for USC and UCLA. I think that this immediately gives them more fan interaction than they have had over the past five years, which is very little in California folks, not, you know, yes, there are people who enjoy USC and UCLA sports, but, but not like in the Midwest or the South where college sports it is just as important, if not more so, than pro-level sports. USC and UCLA are only important if they are like a top 10 program in football or basketball. And even then, they struggle to have the type of relevancy that you would see from football in the state of Iowa or, you know, Alabama in, in you know, football. Okay, that's just the facts. But I do think that this immediately gives them some fan interaction and some relevancy uh, and some just good old fashioned excitedness that they didn't otherwise have. For me, my take on this is, and this is my selfish take, I I'm ecstatic about this because this allows me, a guy who lives in on the left coast, to go to Iowa games, Iowa basketball and or football games that otherwise I would not have access to unless I traveled across the country to go to a game at Kinnick Stadium or Carver Hawkeye Arena. I still haven't been to a game at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Been to a game at Kinnick Stadium, one of my one of the top 5 experiences of my life. And there's nothing that can beat that. Okay? There's nothing that can beat that, but at the very least, this will give me access and many Iowa fans alike in the state of California access to the University of Iowa sports that they otherwise would not have access to. And that goes for all the Midwest schools or, or the Big Ten, you know, Nebraska, Ohio State, Michigan. That goes for all of them. And so from that perspective, I'm very excited. Now, Somebody commented on one of my videos that USC and UCLA needed to be added because they're going to be put in the Big Ten West and, and balance the state of powers in the Big Ten. What? Guys, number one, that, that it's just not true. And, I, and I'll tell you why. Number one, USC and UCLA are mediocre at football and have been for the past five years at best. Iowa, when they played USC in the Holiday Bowl, smashed them. They smashed them in USC's backyard. 
this is not a balance of powers thing. Sure, USC and UCLA, and I would say more so USC than UCLA, have the capability of being really good teams. But further, and and that again, that that is the case. But as it stands now, they are pretty mediocre. But furthermore, it's totally possible that the Big Ten West and the Big Ten East are going to dissolve anyways. And it's just going to be one big conference. So this decision was not made to balance the state of powers in the Big Ten West and the Big Ten East. By 2024, both divisions might be dissolved anyways. So that's, that is absolutely not what this is about. What this is about is access to the California fan base, the tradition that USC and UCLA bring to the Big Ten, money, which again is access to fans, and recruiting. This gives the Big Ten a huge, huge leg up and foot in the door when it comes to recruiting in California compared to all the other states. Now, the SEC has the same foothold and leg up in the state of Texas now that Texas and Oklahoma are moving to the SEC. But again, I uh, the, the Big Ten now has that in the state of California. And that's what this is all about. What do I see, again, this is two years from now, what, what do I see the immediate impact being from USC and UCLA uh, in football or basketball? Well, again, it's two years away. I don't know how Lincoln Riley is going to work out at USC. Um, I would say right now they're mediocre with a chance to be good, specifically USC. We'll see with that. If USC does become good, yes, it, it immediately makes the Big Ten a much tougher conference, but there's no guarantee of that. We've seen that with Nebraska. There's no guarantee that that will happen, but they do immediately give tradition, resources, and recruiting access into the state of California. As for basketball, I would say USC and UCLA are not as good as they have been in the past, specifically UCLA. But again, you are adding a tradition-rich program in UCLA to a tradition-rich conference in, in hoops. I think it'll take USC and UCLA some time to get used to Big Ten hoops. But from an Iowa's perspective, th them moving to the Big Ten doesn't scare me. The Big Ten and, uh, or excuse me, Iowa in football and basketball are as solid as they've ever been. Are USC and UCLA great programs or, or good programs historically? Yes. Are they right now? No. And the, the access that this gives the Big Ten, to me, is worth it. Um, again, as an Iowa fan, I, and quite frankly, I think a lot of big 10 fans feel this way too. This gives me access to the university of Iowa that I otherwise would not have. And this is the way college sports are going folks. It, it just is. And had the big 10 not made this move, a different conference would have. And that's how you got to look at it. The last thing that I want to talk about, um, so, number one, the Olympic sports that USC and UCLA engage in, they will be staying in their conferences, whether it's the Pac-12 or, or Mountain Sports League or whatever uh, it said here, uh, Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. All the other sports that are played collectively in the Big Ten, the U uh, U UCLA and USC will compete in, and that includes baseball as well. I think, in my opinion, the biggest immediate impact that will be given to the Big Ten Conference from USC and UCLA is in baseball, because those are two great programs in baseball. They're still good programs, and I think it immediately makes the Big Ten Conference in baseball much better. Now, the last thing I want to hit on before... 
uh, leaving this video is what's going to happen to all the other conferences? Well, I mean, they are going to struggle to pick up the pieces. It's, it's as simple as that. They will be struggling to pick up the pieces. Um, you, you know, for example, the Big 12, I think schools like Cincinnati and other schools that were maybe in smaller conferences that were doing well will be moving to the Big 12. Um, but the conference will not be as good as it used to be. Same with the Pac-12. And I, I think I think that the Pac-12 is, is actually at bigger risk of totally dissolving than the Big 12 is. The Big 12 can still keep together Kansas, Kansas State, Iowa State, some of the smaller Texas schools, and add a school like Cincinnati. And they, I think they can stay relatively strong as a conference. Not as strong, but relatively strong. As for Iowa State, no, they will not be moving to the Big Ten. There is no way the Big Ten, the, Iowa State on their list of schools to get added to the Big Ten is like number 307, okay? The bottom line is every resource that the Big Ten would want to get out of having a, you know, a school like Iowa in their uh, a, a school out of the state of Iowa, they already have in the University of Iowa. And I've been arguing for a long time, and, and it seems not every Iowa fan under, understands this, but the Big Ten is not going to want two schools from a small state like Iowa competing in the same conference because in the end, they will both end up canceling each other out and they'll both suck. And that's not what the big 10 wants. The big 10 wants one team from one state so that they can take all the resources and they can compete at a high level in the big 10. That's what they want. So Iowa state is, is way, way down the list. Uh, you know, Schools like Oregon, Colorado, Notre Dame, um, Arizona, Arizona State. I mean, <laughs> Stanford are all way higher up the list than Iowa State. So we'll see what happens with those schools. I, I, I think that, that I guarantee you they're in talks. I think we can see uh, the Pac-12 totally dissolve as soon as next, next year. Next year. So baseball, this is what it says. What they're getting into UCLA, which has hosted seven regionals under coach John Savage, is positioned to rule the Big Ten immediately. True. The Bruins will get some challenges from Michigan, which upset the top seeded Bruins in the regional round in 2019 en route to the World Series, Maryland, and Minnesota, but no Big Ten team brings the consistency of UCLA. By the way, I would I would have added Iowa in there. Iowa, you know, I would say is one of the top four Big Ten baseball teams in the past five years. USC, the former dynasty that has been to the NCAA tournament only twice in the last 20 years, may find an easier path back to success in the Big Ten. So um, there you guys have it. Um, you know, not a ton of men's soccer in the Big 12. I think this is a good article if you want to see how all the sports are going to be impacted. I don't think that this article is totally accurate with, with what it brings, what it doesn't bring, and, and who the top contenders are in each sport. Um, I think that the biggest impact the bit that USC and UCLA give is just being better in some of the smaller sports like baseball, softball, women's soccer, men's soccer, but let's be honest, folks, the, the sports that, that matter are, are football and basketball. And when it comes to football and basketball, the immediate impact is, is big names, prestige, recruiting access, and as far as the results on the field and on the court, we'll see. We'll see. We shall see. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. This is, this is a huge, huge story. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> You know, considering what I do, I and I've I've been telling you guys that I'm considering once we hit a thousand subs, branching this channel out into a full Big Ten channel. 
this is totally exciting for me. Um, and uh, this is this this is just incredible, incredible time to be alive, folks. Um, so, so many things are changing so quickly uh, in the land uh, of Lincoln in America. So we will see. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, let me know what you guys think in the in the comment section. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're 40 subs away from 1,000 subs. So freaking close. Help me get there. At the very least, like, comment, share. I'll put the PayPal link and the Cash App link in the description if you want to give your boy a donation and help with my coffee habit. I know times are tough out there, so I totally understand if you cannot. Uh, and last but not least, DVAP, don't be a pussy willow and facts or feelings because your feelings just don't matter. Love you guys. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hang loose.